everyone. Uh, welcome to our second IT fair, where we are not only going to talk about our current opportunities, but I have Balaj, Balint, and Tomas with me, and I'm going to ask them about their experiences on the Web Summit, which they attended between the 1st and the 4th of November, and it's a huge IT conference, and uh, I will be also joined by Fan Sandy later, who is going to talk about his experiences uh, at his at our partners. So, uh, Balash, can you please sum up yeah. shortly Rollout IT? Of course, of course. So before we kick it off, uh, uh, let's give me a few seconds to 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 do a short overview of who we are. So since 2018, uh, at, at Rollout IT, we do end-to-end -end mobile and web development, and we do work very closely with our partners in Agile Framework to, to build you know, anything which is cool, apps, products, software products. Um, fortunately, we are getting more and more awesome partners to work with. Uh, this year, we were also focusing on Hungarian partners, not only uh, our partners abroad in, in Europe and in the US. So we thought that uh, that's going to be a great occasion to share some experience uh, with you guys. Um, you know, and we're also going to introduce our opportunities. So uh, if you think um you would like to connect us then don't hesitate great thank you Balash, for summing it up now let me ask you a few questions about your experiences on web summit mm -hmm. so uh just make just to make sure everyone knows what that what web summit is balint could you please talk about uh, the event itself absolutely so honestly guys for me this was among like all the conferences I've ever attended, the event of the year. So as for technology, I would definitely recommend you go here. Uh, so more than 70k people attend Web Summit. Uh, usually it is in Lisbon, Portugal. And here you have a chance to spend probably a week because even if it's like three or four days long, people stay a week. And here you have an opportunity to meet the community, people who work in IT, and also to, you know, see how the world is changing and what technology is working and focusing on. So it is very good to uh, meet relevant partners and network with other people from technology. Thanks. Uh, and what was the main purpose of going to Web Summit? Tomasz, can you help me out with this? Yeah, sure. Um, greetings from everyone. For, greetings for everyone. I'm dialing in from Silicon Valley, so hopefully the internet is stable. Because even though it is Silicon Valley, often uh, there is a problem. And and regarding Web Summit, that's how I noticed that Silicon Valley was partially empty um, because a lot of people moved to the event. And so I started uh, attending. And basically, the reason why I think it's really good to go because it's the best place for overall getting the all the knowledge in one about one industry it's really hard to follow online what's going on too many industries too many uh, industries impacting each other as things are going so it's the best overall uh, place for a mega event uh, they call it where seventy thousand people all contributing so um it's very exciting it was very exciting to be there okay thanks so this is a question for all of you since you've been there in a different role balaj you as ceo tomas you as us sales representative balint as our sales salesperson as well so how did your day look like on web summit balaj you as a ceo um so you know the the, the event is really a huge event as thomas and balint said um so in 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 a in a in, in a day of the event i usually get up as usual and it took 30 minutes on an hour just to get into the event like enter the conference because there were so many people who tried to enter in morning time and then when we get there uh, like each tent uh, had several startup exhibition sessions and, and because we love working and helping beta and grow startups and i'm personally really interested in working with startups and we can, you know, have great discussions about development and scalability problems and solutions and practices. So I mostly spend my whole day uh, with startups, um, not the early stage, but the, the growth and beta stage. Um, I had a few exceptionally great conversation and it's also, you know, get it's also great to get to know the trends, uh, get familiar how, you know, new type of in investments are going. Um, 
And after the event, we were usually exhausted. So having a dinner and, and do some fun evening time with Balint, with Balint, Thomas and, you know, other folk we just get to know. Uh, it was it was usually how they went. It, it sounds really nice. I wish I could be there. Um, Balint, uh, how did your day look like as, as our Hungarian sales manager? So I think I didn't mention this, but for me, this was the very first web summit. So I didn't know what to expect or how to spend the day. So luckily we had some tips from Tomash uh, that for instance, there are side events in the evening. So we have to save some energy for the evening too. It's called night summit. But also we were trying to prepare in advance and have a schedule, especially using, you know, the web summit app. It was really helpful because you could schedule your day, what, uh, lectures you want to attend what kind of meetings you will have but then it's something like you almost had to cancel everything so imagine like a rock concert you just went to the crowd and then you went with the flow but sometimes it was really helpful to take a glance at your schedule so because of night summit we usually stayed up long uh, that's why we woke up a little uh, late then i just had you know a uh, team gathering and breakfast then we went to web summit and usually we split up so sometimes we reconnected with each other with Bala or Tamash. Sometimes we walk together on the floor, but usually we just split up so we can meet more interesting people and startups. Mm -hmm. And Tamash, what about you? Yeah, I just wanted to add one thing is, is if Web Summit is so big that you, you have to get used to the feeling of missing out. Like you cannot have it as a whole because there's so many things that no matter what you plan, half of it will you will miss because of some um, some other reasons, which is also valuable. So again, it is kind of like drinking uh, uh, from a fire hose. The water is coming very fast, so you can really uh, take a glass, uh, a, a, a glass of water. That's kind of like the feeling. But the buzz around you is so big that basically you minimize your sleep. That's a fact. You try to uh, minimize your, your online meetings, but of course you cannot cancel everything. And you have the web app, uh, an application where you can plan your schedule out. But overall, it is uh, so intense that basically you're just networking ongoingly. So it's an ongoing networking for a week. And if you uh, make 5, 10, 15 good connections per day, then you did the right thing because that's kind of like the norm, I think. And then overall, um, uh, basically, the goal is to keep in touch with the people throughout every second day, third day, and try to see who others you can connect to each other. So you basically have multiple touch points throughout the week with the uh, best connections and able to build some relationship as well, not just like a, 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 a organized uh, chaos, I would say. So it is a very good ongoing networking and, and this is one of a kind uh, event like this. And of course the city of Abs uh, Lisbon helps a lot because it's a very mm -hmm. outdoor get together, grab a drink uh, uh, place and a lot of side events. So if uh, it's a must experience uh, at one point, so hopefully you can join next year and hopefully some of the audience will uh, take, a, take a glance at it next year. Yeah, uh, so you mentioned that networking is basically the number one. What's the difference between networking online and, and offline or in person at Web Summit? That's a good question because it is very different. We, we get used to working in, in online lately, but uh, networking is still intuition, um, communication in, in person, how you feel about the product. You, you have a lot more input in person. So, of course, it's a little bit tiring after feeling uh, that is how easy it can be to, to work from home in your own environment. But, but uh, you, you get a lot more input. So in-person networking uh, is, is basically all about finding how you get along with someone and you sometimes find that instant uh, um, uh, chemistry or that instant people's match. That is uh, online not that interesting. And, and, and one more sentence about this. If an event is so big that you take one particular industry, let's say connected devices or IoT, and you have so many startups that you cannot talk with, with, with all of them in one day and next day you have a new <laughs> exhibit. So, you would never finish it. Uh, uh, the only way to do it is 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 uh, in in person because then you have a, a feeling of of, uh, of of the people and and what they're trying to do. So a lot more input intense. I would say that's the shortest way to describe. Thanks for asking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, previously you guys all mentioned that you've been meeting with startups. Um, what was your favorite startup about Balaj? My favorite. Uh, so I met a growth startup, uh, Riarino, uh, who are building a B two B two C low code no code platform to to help enterprises uh, quickly building their own e commerce solution, customization, loyalty program, uh, like everything which is you know connected to e commerce experience. And I get to know. The CTO, uh, we get into the details. They did an awesome demo about the product. We started to think, you know, which enterprise client, uh, which I know could could use it, would be uh, really like speed up, uh, you know, get to the market uh, uh, for their own products. Um, and uh, yeah, um, technically, it was also great to share experiences, you know, about uh, multi-tenant system challenges, versioning. Uh, so it was the topic is actually very engaging as well as the team was super awesome so uh, I would I would name Ria you know as, as my favorite it sounds interesting Valent what about you well I'm not sure if this was my favorite but uh, the most memorable startup I had so I don't know about you guys but I like simple solutions so I'm at a startup where they uh, you know, realize the problem that people get mosquito bites in the forest. So the guys invented a tiny tool that you can plug into your phone. You have two setups. You can choose children or adults, and you just put this thing on your skin. And in 10 seconds, it's loading. And then the mosquito bite is gone. You don't, you know, sense the itchy part anymore. So here you go. You have a solution if you have a mosquito bite. Wow, I need to know more about it. <laughs> it sounds very useful. <laughs> what about you, Thomas? I was uh, usually walking around HR or human resources and recruitment tech companies, and I was surprised uh, they had a, a tool with Garmin variable product that they measured the, the stress level of, of, of the person. So in a work environment, you try to be balanced, and it was kind of cool that finally a variable device able to do that. So basically it's a, a solution, a Japanese company, a solution against how to, to not to overwork yourself, which we have a tendency to do, especially when you work from home and you, you're basically still in pyjama in the afternoon and forgot to eat your breakfast. That does happen sometimes. So that's basically a, a, a startup that kind of got my attention that uh, hopefully they can, they can see roll, roll it out and, uh, and uh, hopefully with us and uh, they could, they could, um, uh, help people to find their balance, their work balance. Okay, so uh, it's obvious that Thomas and Balint were there from sales side, and uh, Bolaj, CEO, he has actually more than ten years of software development experience. So my question is that Balaj, is this a good event for developers as well? Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, if you would like to get to know what's uh, what's in the world in terms of technologies trends. That's your place. If you are looking for a remote job, you can find it here. Um, it's 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 something which and there is a lot of events, programs after events organized for developers. Uh, if you if you would like to attend on a speech of you know one of the leading software companies like Amazon or Apple or Alibaba, uh, then you can find easily great speeches here. So yeah, I would really recommend every developer who can, you know, go there to to attend at least once in their life because you don't gonna regret that. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So this is my last question, basically, for all of you. So Balash, first, I'm asking you. So what are the things that you learned here, and what are your conclusions on Web Summit? Ooh, it's uh, it's not an easy question, but uh, one of my you know conclusion is that regardless of the current crypto situation, blockchain still has a, a lot of way to grow you know into digitalization solutions, uh, and and it's gonna be with us uh, for a while. Um, and the other one, which is not really a conclusion, but something which I'm really uh, thankful uh, that I'd be there because it's just great to to get to know the people behind companies, you know, not just uh, seeing the landing pages, attending on calls, but meeting them face to face. It's just super awesome. The faces behind the logos, I guess. Exactly. 
Yeah, so uh, Balint, what about you? What are the most useful things that you learned at Web Summit? Um, the experience itself. So if you want to think outside the box, you have to be outside the box, which means even if we guys work remotely, I think we have to meet in person, you know, uh, other teams, other startups. And also it was a great team building for Rollout IT to, to you know, gather in Lisbon and have fun. <laughs> Great. So, Thomas, for you, it wasn't the first Web Summit. So, could this event teach you something new? Actually, it did. It was very interesting to see that it put things into perspective. So, that um, in, in Lisbon, there's no energy crisis. And, and when you spoke with, speak with someone locally, they ask you, What energy crisis do you mean? Because they read something in about the news that in East Europe we have that. So, that actually puts a things in the perspective that the Western part of EU has very different challenges versus, versus the Eastern part. And, and uh, seeing that uh, people's life is not always evolving around what we experiencing, for example, in Hungary or what I'm experiencing in Silicon Valley, it is, it is a different uh, uh, place. So the place itself already gets you out of your, your day-to-day -day, uh, bubble, I would say, with your challenges. And, and the second thing which I learned that despite maybe there is an economic meltdown or people talk about crisis in startups or in the growth stage companies, they are on their own rhythm. So there's no, they don't have crisis. They are all out working towards one goal and seeing uh, so many people working towards their one goal and, and, and uh, achieving that is, is exciting. So uh, that just goes on and just evolves around their own schedule. So. So if, if, uh, if someone assumed that the, the conference would be different this year, it's, it was not last year because of the COVID, it was reduced, but this year it was exactly as busy as before and it was exciting to see that. Thank you, Thomas. And thank you, Luisa, for doing this interview with us. I really believe Thomas, Ballant and myself really enjoyed. And I hope that everyone who, who, who listened to this small conversation get a, get a taste of the Web Summit experience. So again, if you can attend, I really recommend next year, come with us. Uh, we're going to be there. And now it's maybe the time to jump into the job fair. Yeah, so um, first I really want to talk about how our opportunities look, li look like. And uh, yeah, so basically what you need to know about rollout ID opportunities is that most of our opportunities are fully remote or hybrid with flexible working hours. We started as a remote first company years before COVID, so we fully support remote working culture because it provides us flexibility and comfort. We have worked with clients from all different domains, such as healthcare, blockchain, fintech, automotive, education, technology, finance, gaming, and so on. So from locations like US, Hong Kong, Switzerland, Denmark, or Canada, but as a Hungarian company, we are also working with Hungarian clients, of course. We are generally keen on the DX, like, you know, development and project experience. Uh, we work with agile teams, uh, which are fun to work with. Generally, we have small and independent scrum squads. Uh, we dedicated QA testers, front-end and back-end developers, uh, UX and UI designers, uh, and a part-time PMPO, uh, like, you know, manager and product owner. Um, but we always try to match uh, the team set up with the project requirements and the product and, and the roadmap. Um, and we really treat like startup clients differently than an enterprise uh, client in terms of team size, agile processes, scope management, schedule roadmap. So all, each developer find a way you know, to, to work with us in an enjoyable way. Yeah, exactly. We have different types of teams for different types of personalities. For example, we have fully agile scrum teams with all the dif different ceremonies you need, but we also have teams of senior independent contractors worldwide with only two short meetings per week, fully independent work, methodologies, chat and high eff efficiency. We have both full-time and part-time opportunities. Uh, and uh, we work with employees uh, as well as with B2B contractors. Actually, only 30% of our developers are from Hungary. Uh, the rest of them are from East Europe, like Macedonia, Armenia, Ukraine, Romania, Serbia, 
Uh, if you would like to meet some of them, then let's uh, uh, check the recording of our first job fair, where we did an awesome interview with Nikolina uh, from Serbia, uh, who is a part of one of our crypto team. Yeah, uh, what you need to know about us is that we fully support your growth. If you are interested in any of our projects or technologies, you can switch easily. For example, last year, one of our senior developers wanted to work with Rust. So we basically found a one year long project for him. So he actually built an entire scalable mind map solution with Rust for Canadian startup clients. So if you have any ideas like this, we fully support that. If you would like to know more, then visit our website, rolloutit.net and our medium blog, rolloutit.medium.com. You can read all some success stories there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's time to jump into the job fair and talk about the opportunities. So uh, Balash, can you please introduce our first and one of our most valuable clients? Oh, of course, it's my pleasure. Uh, so uh, one of our partner, uh, partners in the banking industry is working with uh, uh, high-end and very scalable technologies, uh, building like the next Revolut uh, uh, with daily banking and, and loan services. Uh, we have center, several senior full stack uh, front end uh, uh, and DevOps engineers working with them. Uh, let's speak a little bit of the technologies in a nutshell. Uh, so they are focusing on a node on node microservices, TypeScript on both the front end and the back end. Uh, on the front end, they do a nicely built micro front end architecture, um, and in terms of infrastructure and tooling. There is like Kafka, RabbitMQ, GraphQL, Swagger, Elastic, uh, uh, and a lot of other nice things uh, in the game. Um, they do have very ambitious plan and roadmap. They are scaling up rapidly. Uh, and, uh, and there are awesome scrum squads to join full-time, full focus as a mid-level or senior developers. If you have like three, five years experience of Node, um, React, uh, then please let us know. And if you're a mobile engineer, iOS, native iOS or Android, then uh, it's there is, a, there is opportunity here for you as well. Um, and now one of our speakers is working there since September as an engineering manager, uh, leading a team of eight. Uh, so let's ask a few questions about his day-to-day -day work. Uh, please welcome Ferenc Sandy, uh, who is going to join us in a minute. Hi, I'm Ferenc Sandy. Hi, thanks for joining Hi. us. So first, uh, Ferenc, can you please introduce yourself in one or two short sentences? Yes, sure. I'm Prim Zaligat Sniti Tatabanya, and I have more than 10 years of experience uh, in the development. And uh, the last four or four and a half years, I changed my focus to the management track. And uh, in the last period, I work as a team leader, engineering manager, or temporary head of development. Since I started work with you, with Rollout IT, I work at the uh, MBH, the bank industry, as an engineering manager. Okay, great. So uh, you're working as an engineering manager, which is a fairly new concept in IT. So how does your day-to-day -day look like? What are your main responsibilities? Yes, it is it's a new concept and I don't and I still don't have a fully clear uh, list of responsibilities. But my main responsibility is the delivery. I mean to make sure my squad are able to deliver and make sure the quality is quite good and the product uh, is main, is maintainable in the long run. I'm also responsible for the people's growth plan and make sure our developers are motivated engaged and have mission and vision. That sounds complex, actually. Um, and what do you enjoy most about this project? I enjoy motivate others, make sure everyone has a feasible growth plan, which is aligned with the firm goals, and build something from scratch, introduce new processes or scale up the existing processes. Mm -hmm. And what are the challenges in the banking industry, especially in the current phase? Um, we are the middling in, in the merging process. So it is the three banks who emerged 
and of the end. It's uh, not several items are so flexible around us and we have to create something stable and something new in this flexible environment. And during this, we build new teams and build culture. Yeah, so you mentioned you're building teams, so you are involved in, in the hiring process. So how does the hiring roadmap look like and what type of developers are you looking for in terms of soft skills and hard skills as well? It's just we are quite young team. So I would like to hire major plus or senior developers, but the, the motivation, the ambitions is more important for me than the seniority. seniority. So if you are so motivated and ambitious, I think you can learn what we need, what is missing from your technical skill. So yes, also what uh, Balas said, uh, we are looking for backend, no GS developers, frontend, real GS uh, developer, mobile, iOS and Android also developers, and uh, we would like to hire a few QA automated test engineer because we believe uh, the automated test is so important, and we we, we like if the uh, candidate has some DevOps skill. So yes, it's so that. So we use AWS, Docker, microservices, choreographies, Kafka, GraphQL, and I think it is exceptional in the bank industry. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for summing it up. Uh, and if someone from the Alliance is interested in this opportunity, don't hesitate to apply. Thank you, friends, for joining us. Thank you, friends. Thank you for the opportunity. So, um... The next opportunity, uh, as you might know, Thomas Holzer joined this webinar from San Francisco. Uh, he works closely with our US partners and he met a great startup a few months ago. And I would really appreciate if you, Thomas, could, could give us an intro about the, about the startup, about their hiring roadmap and everything. Uh, can you please introduce the GIST company? Yeah, sure. I actually don't mind putting their website here on the, the chat as well because it's hard to um, I'm going to add it as a comment for uh, for the webinar viewers on Facebook or yeah. Twitter. Sounds good. So so they are a company called GIST, um, which is a play with words. Um, it's a resume matching app, but you're swiping between the jobs. So that's what new. Um, and of course, we all know how the swiping works from dating sites. But in this case, you actually can look for entry-level jobs or fundamental worker uh, workers are using the app for restaurant catering. I think during COVID, everyone understood that the fundamental workforce is, is really important and it's really hard to find good, good people in that industry. So this uh, platform, the GIST, is targeting uh, this industry, which is very underserved. And they started from Bellingham next to Seattle. Um, and uh, that's kind of like a university town um, in the north part of uh, the U.S. on the coastline. And so they have about 100 candidates, about 100 job openings already there, and the matches work. So, so you swipe right if you like the job, or you swipe right if you like the candidate, and you have a certain skill set that is matching, and most of the personality, there is no reason to do a resume. It's more about uh, who you are and what you like to do. And when there is a match, you are able to directly chat with the business owner and, or with the candidate and, and, and figure out when to meet and how to take it further. So it's basically chat directly with a business owner and, and, and apply in a more unique way. And so they started at about a year ago. Now the product is, I would say, 90% done or, or, or you know, the hardest is always the last 10%. And their hiring roadmap uh, is very interesting because they, they started off with, with web and mobile and, and obviously uh, a backend person, but they, they forgot that they need to have a, maybe a, a DevOps person uh, as well. And then of course the QA and then, then obviously scale the team with a project manager and, 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 and ideally a UX designer as well and so on. So their hiring roadmap now um, is, is besides the current technology, maybe I should talk about, about the current stack that they choose obviously is JavaScript and React on the front end. But on the mobile, they choose uh, Flutter. And so they're using Dart. And on the back end, they're using uh, Node.js as a, as a monolith app in a JavaScript runtime environment. And, and so that's kind of like the core. 
technology, the external services is MongoDB and Elasticsearch and uh, of course Google Cloud Platform and Firebase, but um, uh, everything runs on Amazon Web Services, of course. And so right now their hiring roadmap looks like the following. They're, they're looking for um, uh, probably a part-time DevOps person. They're looking to extend the, the, uh, the web and the mobile team. Uh, and and uh, obviously a QA uh, is going to be something that they kind of missed and, and need, to, need, to, need to do that as well. So um, working with yeah. them very quickly, and thanks for asking. Um, that was about just hopefully they will be available in Hungary or in Europe as well. They only have a competition in Poland. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, so just to emphasize two of our rollout IT, two, two engineers from rollout IT team uh, already joined GIST part-time because we do have part-time uh, opportunities as well. Uh, Amar from Bosnia and Milan from Hungary joined. Amar as a QA engineer, part-time QA, and Milan as a, as a, as a Flutter uh, mobile senior engineer. Are they doing good, Thomas? Yeah, you know, as a startup, sometimes the, the, the ramp up is, takes longer time. Yeah. Of course, holidays are coming and, and they have to focus on rolling out their marketing plan for January. So their start is not like an enterprise. And company. it's Christmas time. So, of course, yeah, December it's, never the strongest month. Yeah, exactly. But it is true that um, they're looking forward to, to help uh, GIST and, and hopefully um, with a, actually more concrete uh, <clears throat> data start in January could all, all work out. That, uh, and they wanted to have a part time engagement anyway. So, it's probably better that the whole goal is to make sure that everyone is happy. And uh, um, Milan is, is actually, I would say, a, um, a really good position because of mobile and web. So he can yeah. do. And then Omar going to have a little bit of a heavy lifting to, to, to start doing everything around QA because there was only manual testing before. So he, he needs to really automate some of the things and, and come up with, with really good uh, testing um, methodologies. So I think as a first QA person, maybe he's going to have a little bit of a harder harder ramp up. But I look forward to to uh, integrate them to the team, uh, maybe between the holidays or, or or early next year, and then after that, scale from there with DevOps and additional uh, people that I mentioned. And um, basically, what I'm really looking forward to is is the moment that just can finally roll out their their product. Uh, not just in the U.S., also in Europe as well, and hopefully help the restaurants and the, um, the bars to make sure that we meet someone who is happy to work there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I had a chat with Amar, and you know, he just really excited about uh, what we call the, the U.S. startup experience, when you, you really can have an impact, uh, your work does matter. And the team is small and 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 really encouraging and uh, uh, you know taking care of all your skill set and personality when they work with you and the time zone difference, and also the technologies are, you know, cutting edge technologies. So uh, he 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 was excited to join the team. Thank you, thank you for sharing, Thomas, uh, and thank you for the summary. Sure. Valint, uh, can you also sum it up? What's on your radar? Of course, so I have a US startup. I think I can name it, right? Yeah, you can. It's okay. Okay. So the name is uh, Rubik, which is, I think, contrary to um, how it sounds like very Hungarian, because, you know, guys, there's this Rubik cube with the little colorful cubes on it. Uh, it is a US startup based in New York, New York City. Uh, and in short, it is an investment platform for inst institutional investors in single family rentals. So both for sellers and buyers, this is a smart platform, a private platform where Rubik uses data science and machine learning as well to make the platform more effective. And currently from 2023, they are actively looking for upper, medior and senior React developers, at least with like four years of experience. Nice, nice. Thank you. Um, in our Hungarian partners, uh, we also knew uh, about a few exciting opportunities. Uh, Luisa, do you think you can you can sum it up for us? Yeah, sure. So we are looking for senior and media Node.js and React developers in our partners team, and they are building uh, an architecture software solutions actually 
And even though they're Hungarians, they are working in fully full remote teams. So if you prefer full remote work, then and you know Node.js and, and React, don't hesitate to apply. And we are also looking for developers for an electronic broker service solutions. And we are looking for highly skilled C++, Java, and Android uh, developers from junior level to senior level. And uh, if you have an analytical mindset, a love for mathematics, and a passion for high-quality software engineering, then this is the opportunity for you. We are not only looking for programmers at Rollout IT, one of our Hungarian enterprise partners, uh, they are looking for data analysts and data product owners in their data analytics team. So if you have three years of experience in this era, don't hesitate to apply because we also have some very exciting opportunities for you where you could work with the most modern technologies as well. Yeah, so I think these were all most of our opportunities. Uh, obviously, we have some more if you if you visit our career website at rolloutit.net. Uh, and if you don't find any matching uh, opportunities for your skill set, please don't hesitate to, uh, to apply to via our join us site, which you can also find on our website. And we might have some opportunities coming coming in for you next week. So we will we will get in touch with you. Thank you very much, Balaj, Balin, Tomas, and Ferenc for, for joining me to this uh, event. And also thank you for our audience for, uh, for visiting this event. And I hope you could learn something new from us. And, uh, and we will see you next time. Thank you, Luisa, for taking the lead. And thank you, everyone. Cheers, thank guys. you. High five. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.